Hi and welcome to this talk about FabDoc. We will uh, today have a dive into this uh, software package and uh, give you an introduction of how it works. FabDoc is the most used uh, electrical calculation software for electrical low voltage installations in Norway. FabDoc is uh, also available in several other countries. What you can do in FabDoc is uh, a lot of things. You can calculate short uh, circuit currents, calculate uh, touching voltages and voltage drop. I've mentioned that twice. You can select conductors cables and bus bars mainly. You can select protective devices and find the right uh, settings for adjustable protection devices in uh, circuit breakers and motor protection. You can uh, do a control of braking capacities and uh, disconnection times for protective devices. You can do a control of the discrimination or selectivity between protective devices. You can do a check of backup or cascade protection between, uh, between uh, protective devices. And you can uh, calculate the uh, UPS, both in a normal mode, bypass mode, and uh, battery mode, which is very important. You can uh, calculate with transformers in the low voltage installation. And for the latest version, you can also uh, calculate with the generator supply in addition to grid supply. FabDoc is actually a very user-friendly software package. Of course, you have to have the basics uh, of electrical engineering education background to understand and to use it. But uh, if you have that in place, you should be covered and it should be easy to, to get started. So let's jump into it. Here I have started Fedbook. And to get started, I have to click on this. Shortcut here, new installation. I have to give the installation name. Just uh, give it a name here. And if this isn't used before, it should be OK. Here you can also add a project number or whatever you like. Then we have uh, three options here. We can uh, use a grid connection, unspecified grid, a generator supply, or a grid connection via a transformer. In this example, I will uh, use this one. Uh, the most easiest one is the directly low voltage supply from the grid. Uh, if you have the data from the grid company and you have an uh, installation point, you can use this one. But if you don't know you um, and, and have the, uh, uh, the design responsibility for the transformer, you can use this one. Here we have uh, the opportunity to give the uh, references for the first uh, low voltage uh, distribution board. I call this uh, just a number. Um, and I use the Norwegian TFM system. If you can use uh, whatever you like. 
Uh, and you can also ask FabDoc to automatically put in the ref reference uh, numbering here according to the uh, EN uh, 81346 or ESO 81346. We also have to choose uh, what uh, reg reg regulations to use. Uh, in my Norwegian version, I only have the opportunity to use uh, NEC 400, which is the Norwegian regulation. And the uh, versioning arrangement for the grid. For new installations in Norway, we normally use TNCS. But in some older grids, we also use IT to some point. And the live conductor arrangement. L1, L2, L3 and neutral is the normal. And of course, a lot of other characteristic uh, data for the first uh, switchboard. I'll put in uh, 1000 amps in this example. And I choose the, the main distribution box here. And I, and I will have to pick or choose some values for the maximum voltage drop. If I exceed this, uh, some of these uh, values, WebDoc will give me a warning. Uh, when we have the control of this transformer, we also uh, have control over the voltage at the start of the calculation. So it's no problem to increase this uh, above the, uh, the values that uh, FabDoc uh, suggests here. So I'll just squeeze this up to 6% totally voltage drop. And 3% to the latest uh, distribution board. Now this is uh, done. I have to take care of the upstream network. The medium voltage uh, supply. They have to select uh, voltage level. 22 kilovolts or 11 kilovolts is the main it's the mainly used and here we have to choose or define the short circuit power that the grid can supply max state uh, fabdoc suggests uh, 300 mva mm -hmm. In many cases, that's okay. If you don't know, I usually choose this to 400. It's uh, very unlikely that uh, short uh, circuit power exceeds 400. For the minimum, value of the short circuit power. You can uh, go with 150 if you're close to a transformer station or if you're a bit away or you don't know, you can choose a more conservative number here. Here I choose 50 as a, as a very conservative number. If you're uh, on a, on a Overhead line, a weak overhead line, far far distant from a substation, a transformer station, you might have to go uh, down to 20 or 15. But in uh, in most cases, 50 is a, it's a good number for the minimum state. To 
confirm the data I now have cho chosen, I have to click this uh, approve data. And here you can see if Hebdoc has uh, made a schematic of the grid, high voltage, uh, medium voltage grid supply, the transformer, a feeder from between the transformer, and the first uh, distribution board. As you can see, Fabdoc now has put in a 100 kVA transformer, but that's probably not what I would like to have here. Um, if you remember, we have uh, stated that uh, first uh, distribution board should have a uh, thousand amps. That's more uh, suitable with an 800 kVA transformer. So then I have to go to the registry. If we have uh, registered a transformer before, I can pick one here. If we have one suitable, as we can see, it has uh, 800 kVA from 22,000 volts to 415. That's the standard ratio for a transformer. Um, this is probably picked from a data sheet. It should be uh, okay values to use. In some other cases, uh, we have a, a larger transformer, for instance, uh, 1600 kVA. The short circuit uh, voltage uh, in percent is a bit larger than for an 800. As we can see here, the, there are some missing information in this uh, data set for this transformer. The R0 and R plus is zero, that's not correct. And this is not correct either. So please uh, have a check on the data that someone has put in here. It's, it's not uh, quality assured, all the lines here. So please uh, do an extra check that we can find something that uh, actually works. This one is not good either. The AK on 3% is not good. Should be a lot higher. Here we have a Transformer that uh, looks a lot better. The R0 on R plus should be one if we have this uh, DI11. If we have a DI5, that's not good. So, mm, no, I'm not happy with this one. So, I do the hard way. I click on this. Select new one. So I just uh, type in some uh, generic data for a transformer. DI11 is standard group and we have TNS system and 
this one is not used to anything in the calculation, but I just put in the number there. It's the inverse current. And for an 800 kVA, the sh short circuit voltage in percent is uh, around five. And the ER is around 1.2 maybe. Small variation between the manufacturer, but around this in this area should be useful. Our zero and our plus is uh, connected to this uh, group here. And it's usually around one and the X zero one X plus is around 0 0.95. And then we can save this. And it disappeared and I have to look it up again. It should be here somewhere. Here we are. Yeah. Select. And OK. Then we have the medium voltage grid. We have the transformer. And we now have to put in the feeder between the transformer and the first uh, distribution board. Click on this one. And here I can um, choose a bus bar, for instance. Five meters. Take aluminium bus bar for light conductors. Have to pick something larger than a thousand amps, 1200 amps should be suitable. And I need to get this uh, protection device placed in the distribution board. I was too fast and clicked on this, uh, so the bus bar disappeared. You can um, you can choose a lot of uh, setup for this uh, connection. You can have a non, you can have combined. And just overload. Located at load. We click OK on this one, it's, uh, it's placed there. Sorry. to have a, a cable and you see the you know, we got this cable that we, sh that we should put in a bus bar that I accidentally th threw away. Sorry about that. To do it again. And the main uh, circuit break for the main distribution board can be found here. It's a symbol of fuse, but if you click on it, we'll have the opportunity to choose something else than a fuse. It will not be an option to use a fuse as a mind circuit breaker. So we, uh, we will choose a circuit breaker. And take the first one on the Manufacture list, the APB. And here we have the performance class uh, according to braking capacity. Uh, with this uh, relatively small transformer, the braking capacity, the, the, the currents, the full currents are low, and then, then there's no problem. You can choose any of those you would like, and it will work just fine. 
I'll take this one. And we also have the opportunity to take a check here if uh, if this is okay. You can see you get okay on all of this. Uh, this IC is the braking capacity, and of course to make the installation as cheap as possible, you don't need to choose any braking capacity that's uh, that's 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 far away from the fault currents you have in the switchboard. So here I, I choose this uh, 1250 circuit breaker with this breaking capacity of 50 kiloamps. It will be plenty. Select. And it uh, falls into place here in the schematics. Here we of course have the opportunity to do the adjustment of the relay protection. can show the figures in uh, relatively or in apps. I always use the apps. It's uh, not easier to relate to. Since we uh, have chosen the main current to be 1000 amps, the protection level here should be higher than 1000 amps. So I put this on uh, 1100, should be okay. Time delay on the long, long time uh, protection. Just have to pick a value. And the, the rest of the curve, you can adjust as you like. Um, if not, uh, if you don't have any good reason for it, you should uh, leave this off. The instantaneous curve. It will make it easier to achieve uh, the selectivity throughout the system. The time delay here, well, can choose 0 0.4 seconds. Should not be either any problems. We can have a check of the fault currents. Looks great. If we, uh, if you choose the value of this settings that's outside of uh, what's recommended. If you can go get uh, disconnection times that's uh, longer than the, what the cable can handle, these fields will be red. Now we have the main distribution boards and board in place, and we can uh, continue to build up the rest of the installation. I will now put in a new distribution board downstream to this main distribution board, sub-distribution board, and mark this. And here we can see we have a lot of options for uh, what circuits we can put in. I will just go through them uh, very briefly. The first one is uh, a new switchboard, distribution board, downstream. The next one is a new grouping within this switchboard. And here we have a new uh, bus bar distribution uh, system. It means you can um, have a bus bar for supply to a distribution board or to machinery or type of units you can use to whatever you like. And here we have a benching node, it means you can um, put in a, a node for further connection to switchboards or uh, 
Any other? Consumers you might have. And this one is uh, a connection node with, uh, with no uh, protection device. You can also put in a generator if you have some uh, diesel backup. Here's a motor circuit, variable load or a, or a socket, a fixed load, electrical heating or light. And here we have some uh, distributed load, typically used for uh, road lightning. And some other that's uh, not very important in your control circuits. Internal in the switchboard. A ring circuit, not possible to choose in Norway because of the regulations we have here. And a spare circuit. But now when we are um, here in the main distribution board, this uh, first uh, ones are the most uh, useful. I will now choose this uh, new distribution board downstream to the main switchboard. Circuit ID one, I can use that. The same uh, conductor arrangement. And we have to choose some uh, dimensioning uh, loads for this circuit. I choose uh, 100 amps. This one is used for the dimension to, to, to get the right dimension of the the cable and the protecting device. I can here, of course, uh, do some uh, extra with the schematics. For instance, uh, put in a load disconnector here, located by the load. Doesn't do anything in the calculation, but if you want the schematics as uh, correct as possible, you can do this. You can uh, put in some extra like potential bonding also in the switchboard. Of course, if it's uh, if the circuit is uh, has some uh, reinforced uh, insulation or it's uh, it's uh, the cable is laid uh, protected you can choose that as well here and you can choose if you have some uh, earth leak leakage uh, protection as well i will not uh, do any of that also on this uh, main circuit a combined uh, protection device would be good And I come here and look for a suitable circuit breaker. Since I used ABB on this first one, I would like to have the same manufacturer for the for the rest of the protection devices to achieve a cascade and selectivity. For the most of the manufacturers, you have to use 160 amps to get the uh, conditions right for selectivity downstreams. There are some uh, exceptions from that. For instance, Schneider has some uh, 100 amps circuit breaker that uh, do the job, but um, I said the most of the manufacturers, uh, you have to go up to 160. 
I choose this one, normal braking capacity and uh, protection device that has a uh, long time, short time and instantaneous settings. I define the current dimension current to be 100 amps, so I probably should have a protection device that goes above that. And this one is in place, and I can go in and choose a cable. And I use uh, multi cores in here, very much used in cable ladders. Um, 30 degrees ambient temperature, that should be okay for the most uh, indoor installations. And if you use this uh, 0.7 uh, correction factor, um, you take into account that the uh, cable ladder will be filled up at some point. I choose a length here, 50 meters. I select cable that can do the job. FSE. Four times uh, 95. Has a carrying capacity that's uh, for about the load current. And that should be fine. And I can go back on the on the circuit breaker and do the adjustment on the protecting device. As you can see here, the lower setting of the weighted current of the protective device as it's set currently is too high. When we go to the adjustment uh, button here, I can click on this to get it in amps. Now I have to adjust this down to get uh, below the limit of the current capacity for the for the cable. Have to choose one uh, number here. A long time delay. And here I can uh, choose a time delay uh, short uh, circuit protection that will give us uh, good conditions for the selectivity later on. And now we have a uh, sub distribution board in our system. And I can start to put in some circuits here to the loads that I have. If this is a standard office building, for instance, you will need to have some sockets and you will need to have some light. I'll put in a socket circuit first. One phase, you can uh, of course choose uh, three phase if uh, that's the case, but most of the loads are one phase. In Norway, we usually use uh, 16 amps for the socket circuits. Put in a load current of uh, 10 amps. And I get a miniature circuit breaker. 16 amps. And here we have the opportunity to get, get some uh, earth voltage uh, protection as well in the same unit. 
I choose this one. And we have to put a cable. Thirty meters. I select the FSI. Two times uh, two point five. Square millimeters. And we can now see that uh, Feldock has uh, calculated the voltage drop to the load all the way here from the transformer, 2.71%. And the expected uh, voltage at the terminal. And we now have put in a, a circuit here beneath the, in, in, inside the sub uh, distribution board that we have defined here. If we have uh, some lights here, Five amps from the circuit, for instance. For um, a light circuit, I will not use the uh, earth uh, fault protection to avoid any unwanted. Uh, Chips. Well, he's here. I choose uh, 16 amps of uh, a standard miniature circuit breaker. Take the same cable as I used in the last one. Put in the length and click OK. And the circuit comes in place here. Here we have a lot of uh, options to navigate and, and edit. If I, for instance, have uh, several of these, I don't have to, to find them one by one. I can, uh, for instance, Mark this just by click. Use the control C and control V. And I get as many of these as I would like to have. And I can of course edit the, the way I want. Socket, uh, well, sockets west and sockets East or sockets uh, with X and so on. And of course, we have to adjust the cable length, and so on for each one. If you now want to check the selectivity, you have to make sure that the protection device closest to the fault is the one that uh, disconnect. And then I can just mark, mark uh, the circuit and click on this uh, selectivity check button. And we get this, uh, this table here. We have the protection devices in series after each other here. The socket here with the corresponding fault currents. And as we can see, have as we can see, we now have a very good selectivity here from the table from the manufacturer that's uh, built into this uh, software. 
we have a selectivity up to 25 kilowatts. And that's larger than the highest uh, volt current we have. We also get these uh, curves lined out, so we can uh, graphically see that the curves uh, are placed uh, as we like to have them. If we will need to adjust some of these, let's say one of these uh, had some overlapping, you can uh, choose the one you would like to adjust here and, and make an adjustment in this picture. This can also be done inside, uh, if I uh, don't click on this one, in the editing picture for the circuit, you can also do the selectivity check directly there. This is uh, quite a powerful tool to use. Then I can um, right click on the switchboard and I get out some char characteristic data for the, for the switchboard. Full currents, load currents, Tablock uses the loads that I've put in in each circuit here, summarize them and get you a load cal calculation. Since I uh, defined one of them and copied them, well, they were all connected to L1. If I go to this uh, switchboard, I can actually uh, make them uh, I can sort them in a better way. We also can uh, put in a lot of new circuits in a batch. So you can go in and modify them later on. I don't use this as uh, often, but it's uh, it's. Uh, it's an opportunity. You can go here and sort the circuits. And we can uh, update the live conductor arrangement. If I do this on this, uh, uh, you can see how we have uh, 74 amps in one of the places. If I do this. You can see Fedlock now has placed the circuits on the conductors uh, one, two, and three, so that uh, not all the load comes on L1. This could be uh, useful when you're putting in all the circuits in a circuit board. That's not necessary. Um, what we uh, often used to do is uh, to put in the length, uh, longest cables with the representative uh, protecting device. So if I have some uh, 16 amps and some 10 amps and some 25 amps, I take one of each and put in the longest cable. But of course, uh, some of the clients uh, have some demands that every circuit should be put into Fabdoc, and then we have to do that, of course. This was a brief introduction to Fabdoc and what it can do, how to get started. I hope you, hope you have uh, learned something and uh, that this was a useful talk. Thank you.